Hello everybody, welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason, I'll be bringing you today's episode. Please hit the like and subscribe button, and as always, we give our shout out of appreciation to all of our patrons. We appreciate all the tips and support. We're hoping to use it to add more games to the channel, such as Roulette. And uh, if you're curious about it, just go ahead and check the description of the video down below. So for today, I want to go over a, uh, just going to discuss a, a system that was sent to us by one of our viewers. Now, um, you're going to have to bear with me because I'm going to be reading this as I go. Um, I prefer to do these by, um, with, with no prior thinking about the system. I just like to go, go dive right into it for the video. So let's take a look at what they've got. So they say they usually play this on a $25 and $50 table. They scaled down what they sent me to a $5 table. I'm going to show it as a $5 table, um, as a $5 game, but in reality I would do at least, a, normally I would do at least a minimum of a $10 table just because that's almost impossible to find a $5 table nowadays. Um, now before I dive into it, by the way, if any of you viewers have any strategies you would like us to go over or any, um, just anything you'd like us to shoot in general, please email us at sincitylivinglv at gmail.com. We are more than happy to shoot these videos for you guys. We really enjoy it. All right, so let's dive into this. So he's assuming a $5 table. So on the come out roll, he's going to do a $30 no pass. He's going to do a $62 no 10, right, which is a $60 no 10 with a $2 VIG. This is uh, one of the spots that I'm not a huge, huge, huge fan of um, because you've just crossed into the line of having to spend the second dollar on the, on the VIG. You could actually increase this by, by another $40 and not have to pay any more money on the VIG. So, um, I, I, I just feel like we're giving away free money when we do these. I'm not saying it's a bad bet. I've done this in the past. It's just, I always look at it like, man, you know, I'm kind of throwing away money on that one. Um, so they have an option, which I will, of course, do. We'll do an optional hard 10 for $10. And then an optional yo for 3 to $4. We'll do it for 4 Okay, that's not visible on the camera, so we'll set it up over here. Okay. So this is their come out roll bet. Okay, I can, I can see this. I can see what they're trying to do. They are trying to hedge against the, the yo that will wipe out their $30 bet right there. If you got four bucks on it, that's gonna pay you 60 bucks. Um, they're also, they've got a hedge against a seven rolling there, which would make this even money, but they would lose these two bets, so they would be down 14. They'd be down $16 if a seven rolls on this, because they lose the $2 VIG, they lose the four there and the 10 there, but they would win the 30 here, which would, would uh, even that one out. And then the hard 10 as a partial hedge against the 10 rolling. It cuts out a third of the possible ways for to lose on this. Um, if a hard 10 were to, were to roll, which is a 1 in 36 chance, then they would lose this, of course, but they would win $70 over there. Now, their thinking on this one from further down in this email is that uh, if an easy 10 rolls, sure, they lose 62 they lose $72 here. However, they have a really good point for for a uh, don't pass bet up there, which is true. That's that's one that's the, the best option. The four and ten are the best points you could have for a don't pass. As far as likelihood of winning, um, as far as the amount of money you can win, eh? Because your your lay is going to pay you half. So you have to bet more to win win uh, win less. But it would be an excellent uh, excellent point. So then, once there is a point, and let's just go ahead and say that the four rolls, just so we can. Get further down there. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so once the four rolls, then they pull down their no 10. Okay, fair enough. They take it back. So they've lost this, of course. And then they will place, they'll do 27 across, or on a, a uh, $10 table, they do 54 across. So what do they do from there? So for the next three to five rolls, depending on how much you want to risk, you full press. Full press each place every time something rolls. Um, and press however you wish to. If you want to full press just that, that number or if you want to cross press or do whatever, just put everything that you make for the next three to five rolls back into your bets. 
Um, once you're in the fifth or sixth total roll that doesn't have a seven, pull down your place bets on the four and ten and regress the inside bets back down to the base level base level and at that point theoretically you've got a free you've got a free bet and this will uh, your don't pass theoretically also protects you here um, and then once you regress down then you just go with whatever whatever press you you wish to uh, whatever press method you wish to use okay all right this is uh, um, this is actually super 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 common I, I see this a lot lately the the uh, um, the no 10 or no four uh, head, come out hedge is uh, it's actually super 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 common lately along with uh, with the hard 10 hedge on on your no 10 and the and the yo hedge on your don't pass the theoretically the no 10 and the yo hedge is your your don't pass um, super super common I see this all the time and then combined with the regression with the with the down on the lay and then uh, place bets with regression yes this is this is something I see a lot uh, a lot lately um, it's not bad it, it's it's not bad in its its uh, theoretical it's definitely a grind it's a grind strategy. The the downside to this, especially going for the three to five rolls, is that uh, half the time you're gonna going to um, lose your inside and and win on your don't pass uh, a lot. Um, so you win you win a little bit of money, but that's what makes it kind of a grinder um, grinder strategy. Is that for the most part you're going to be winning very 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 small amounts of money a lot. Um, some of the things I'm not a huge fan of, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of doing hedges of, of yo's or sevens. It's just like I'm not a huge fan of doing crap checks and CNEs on the come out roll because the odds are against you. Every time you win it, you've lost it far more times than you won it. So you're, you're just giving away, giving away money on that. Just pick a side, you know, pick, pick your side and just take your chances as far as the come out roll goes. Um, although that is a dangerous spot for uh, the come out roll, the don't pass, so many different ways of, of, uh, losing it um, and then the the regression down this this has has a decent number of movements right at first but then after that it's fairly basic so this is not going to be one of those that the dealers are going to be like oh my god what a pain in the butt it's got a lot of parts right at the beginning um, all the various hedges are are fine like I said I see this a lot and the only thing I can really say to this one is figure out how much you want to win and make it a reasonable amount always look at like a multiple multiplier of your your um, your buy-in if you buy in for 200 bucks decide that you know if I win if I'm up 50% or 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 double or triple you know if I if I bought in for 200 bucks and I've got 300 in front of me I'm gonna leave or I got 400 in front of me I'm gonna leave uh, pick pick an amount and make that your stopping point. I have I've seen almost identical to this probably half a dozen times every day for the last month. I have probably seen two players leave up using a strategy like this. Not because it doesn't work, because there's portions of it that absolutely work. Like any other strategy, there's no such thing as a full poop strategy. Um, and the, the grinder ones especially give you a long time to win little bits of money. If you win up to a certain point, take your money and go. You've won, you're ahead, it's a game, you're playing for fun, set set a limit and, and take your winnings. Because if you keep chasing the bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger winnings, the house edge is gonna come into play. And I have no exaggeration, actually last night saw a guy playing the no 10 and uh, set the point as a 10 winner 10 set the point as a 10 winner 10 they, they it wiped out so much of their winnings so fast um, so set yourself a a spot and and go for it the there's only one thing I'm not a fan of with this the the no 10 I typically see actually combined with a pass line bet be honest not with a don't pass uh, some people will I do see a lot of people with the don't pass that will do will do a uh, um, the occasional no 10 or something like that but I more often than not see it going going with a pass line bet or somebody that's not playing either either one at all just gonna play 
play place bets inside. The only real thing I see with this that I would not like is that there is no actual spot anywhere for a decent sized win. There's, there's no spot for a good size win. I'll see people do a $100 no 10, but they don't have anything over there. With a $30 don't pass and a $62 no 10, if a seven rolls on the come out roll, they don't win anything. They actually lost money, they lost a couple bucks in the big. Where's the win point for this? Yes, a, a two or a three will win on the, on the don't pass um, and, and you'll lose your, your, um, your yo, but the two or the three, so three out of the 36 combinations of the dice, a one in 12 shot of winning 30 bucks right here. Outside of that, within the first six rolls of the dice, which is the where a massive majority of the seven outs come, where's the big win point? Because you come down to 27 across, you know, you take your no 10 down, go to 27 across, you've got your $30 don't pass. You're power, you're power pressing everything, which I'm a huge fan of. You guys all know I'm a huge fan of power presses. You're power pressing everything, so you're not collecting. And most of the seven outs are going to occur, so you're going to lose your 27 across, so you're going to win your $30 here, so theoretically you won three bucks, except that you lost your, your yo and your, your hard tens. So you're, you're technically in the hole on this one. The problem I see with this is I don't see any spot to actually win. I don't see a spot where you're taking your winnings um, except for long rolls. Long rolls, once you've regressed down, um, you've taken down your place bets on the 4 and 10, you've regressed down to see your inside numbers, you're theoretically ahead. Um, that's, that's actually your winning point is, is five or six rolls into it or three to six, wherever you decide to take down. You take down all your power presses and, and set up your bets. That's your win point, but it, it's, uh, it's so rare that uh, to, to hit that many rolls without a seven often enough to counteract how much the, the little losses, because you're going to have little losses. The, you, you're, you're just losing a few bucks here and there. Those little losses will get counteracted by, by your occasional... Uh, coming down at that point, if you catch the huge roll and you can start power pressing up, you're just so many beats behind. So, um, I definitely see the appeal to it. And yeah, this is absolutely a, a strategy that you could play for a long time. You play for a long time, you may or may not um, win. Again, everything depends on the vagaries of the dice. The dice are their own creature at times. Um, it's not a bad strategy. It's really not. There's a lot of thought behind this strategy. Um, from a, from a logical standpoint, I like it. I, I really do. I would not play it, but I like it. It doesn't have any logical flaws to it anywhere. Um, so yeah, it's it's not bad. I I, I certainly like I, I like strategies that have thought to them that make some sense. So this one definitely makes some sense, and it's again not super difficult for the the dealer. It's not going to slow the game down. Um, so yeah, so there you go. That's a strategy sent to us by uh, one of our viewers. And again, if you guys have any strategies, by all means, send them to us at SinCityLivingLasVegas at gmail.com. Strategies or anything else you would like us to shoot, by all means. We're more than happy to shoot it. And again, my name is Jason with Sin City Living. Thanks a lot, folks. Catch you next time.